Welcome back to our channel, Dr. Lee, where we talk about all things skincare and dermatology. I'm Dr. Shaw. Dr. Maxfield. And today we're going to be talking about under eye bags, crepiness, and wrinkles around the eyes. And specifically, we're going to be focusing a lot on the eye creams that could be or could not be beneficial in this area. Are eye creams a scam? Do eye creams even work? Are they just tiny little moisturizers? We're gonna find out in this video, and we're also gonna give some recommendations about some of the procedures you can have done to target some of these under eye Malar bags. All things eye bags, here we go. Here we go. We've all seen these, we have maybe had these, especially when you have not slept, which the science behind that, I have no earthly idea why that's the case. But eye bags are multifactorial. They involve multiple different structures around your eyes. This ranges from fat pads migrating, the actual muscle around your eye can get loose and weakened. You can have herniated fat pads, you can have skin laxity, and all of this contributes to this picture here, eye bags. And also just wrinkles in general from movement of your orbicularis oculi muscle can cause wrinkles under the eyes, crepiness around the eyes, and also pronounce those eye bags. Now there's many different ways to approach the under eye area like this. Now if it's just mild, maybe you're a little bit on the younger side, maybe you first started to notice some bags, maybe you only notice the bags when you first wake up in the morning. It depends on where you are in your under eye bag and wrinkle journey, essentially. But depending on where you are in that journey is how you're gonna want to approach this. Now, if you have an underlying medical condition, because this can be associated with fluid retention, thyroid diseases, then nothing that you do cosmetically is really gonna help with that. You wanna correct the underlying issue first, but if simply it's just due to aging, just due to maybe not getting enough sleep, there are things you can do. So the first thing we wanna ask is, we always go from least invasive to most invasive. And the least invasive thing to do would be to apply an eye cream. Now, are eye creams even effective? That's a huge question mark, because if you don't know what you're treating, you may just be reaching for an eye cream blindly and it's not going to do a thing for you, and you've probably just spent a lot of money. But for you, some might be particularly helpful when it comes to these under eye bags, but not all of them. Some selective eye creams can be helpful here. Right, so what we saw in this video, this is the Peter Thomas Roth Firmax. This is a product that's gone viral for the last two years on social media because the effects are so dramatic. So what's actually happening here in this video? So what you're actually seeing is a, it's essentially a, an acrylic, a polymer of sorts that forms essentially a glue on the surface of the skin. And that glue tightens and basically causes the under eyes to essentially just collapse in on itself. Now you see this in the Firmex product from Peter Thomas Roth. You also see this in other products, and we'll talk about a few other options that have this ingredient in it. But essentially it's forming a glue. Now there's some pros and cons of this. The pros are that it has an immediate effect. The cons are some people are allergic to the acrylic. And the second con that we see is that with movement of the eye, eventually that glue basically falls apart. It can leave a residue on the skin that some people don't like. So it doesn't last very long. And it also can create a residue that's difficult to layer makeup over. But in this video, even herself, she does use makeup with it and it does actually not create a chalky appearance. So you can do this hack. It kind of what do you think it smells like? So this is a product from It Cosmetics. They've also incorporated one of these acrylates into an eye cream. So there's this one, there's Westmore, there's Plexiderm, the OG. This one in particular from It Cosmetics, I think it perhaps from the reviews I've seen and people have used a lot of them, it's one of the weaker ones of the bunch, so it doesn't grab and hold as much. But yeah, the downside, just like Dr. Shaw said, it can be drying, allergenic, it can flake, but functionally, but functionally, this does something nothing else does. It grabs, holds, and tightens, and the results in this video, I'm 100% certain, are real. What other cream can you put on your face to get this dramatic of a result in a short period of time? I mean, it is sticky. Like, it's dried on my fingers, it's sticky, it's tacky, but if you are someone who does have very loose skin in this area, this is probably like a trial and error thing. It doesn't work for everyone, but for the person it works for, it can work amazingly. So those are some products to look for. I do think they might be worth your time, money, and investment if you can get past the aesthetics of it. So those effects, those dramatic effects are true. I say this type of thing is for a very specific person that has very loose skin underneath the eyes. It can be very effective. And it's also great for like a photo shoot, something you have to do for videos, a wedding, something like that where you only need that temporary effect and you're gonna get the results that you want. Now, if you simply have 
mild puffiness in the morning. This is a lot of times what I'm suffering from. Caffeine can be a great ingredient to treat under eye bags. Now, it's not gonna have a massively dramatic effect, but I do notice that it helps with puffiness. We've talked about this one in the past, but this is the L'Oreal Revitalift 2.5% hyaluronic acid and caffeine product. The caffeine and the hyaluronic acid together, they, they both help a little bit with the puffiness and crepiness that you might see under the eyes. So effect is not nearly as dramatic as you might see with one of these acrylate products, but it does help with mild puffiness. And then the other part of this product, which is why I love this product, despite the fact that some people don't, it has these cooling rollers in it. So you can like keep this in the fridge, keep it really nice and cool. And then just like slapping a cucumber to your face, it will give you that cooling effect to tighten the skin as well. I mean, aesthetically it's nice. Um, so it combines like a novel hack plus the evidence-based ingredients. And then for me, like cost, it's not a hundred bucks, right? This is not gonna hurt your wallet like most eye creams will, which is why I absolutely love this product. Novel, evidence-based, cost is not bad. And some of you might say, oh, he just applied the dropper to his face. How could he? How dare he? And actually, I know for a fact that L'Oreal tested the preservative system on this for application to the face directly. So should be safe for long-term use. Of course, you can double check me on that, but I did ask the company directly. So here we are. Now we've talked about caffeine. Some other things you can look for is common ingredient we always talk about, which is retinol. So retinol is gonna help to firm the skin underneath the eyes. It's gonna help to build collagen. So if you have that crepiness that's contributing to the bags or contributing to the wrinkles around the eye, then I think retinol is still one of the best ingredients. Now. I will say there have been studies that have shown that because of the meibomian gland activity underneath the eyes that contribute to lubrication of the eyes, some people who use retinol around the eyes will experience dry eyes. So if you're someone who's prone to dry eye, I would be cautious with retinols around the eye. I think that's very reasonable. And this is one of the times where I would pick a retinol over a more efficacious retinoid. So retinol totally lives here. Um, one that I've used this is like i don't know third tube for my wife to like just piece by piece we're putting this puzzle together but the rock retinol correction eye cream the weird thing about this though it there's like no data like percentage who knows is it encapsulated no is it slow release no why is it so gentle no clue <laughs> but i mean like just a retinol product around the eyes we've also talked about the la 24 eye cream as well but this is a good place for that ingredient to live Right, and then the last thing that I would say is Rock actually, so Rock's OG retinol, for created retinol over the counter essentially back in like 1958, great brand overall. They actually had this like dual correction eye cream. It has like an under eye cream and an upper eye cream. And you're supposed to use the pink one on the upper eye, and you're supposed to use the white one on the lower eye. What's cool about this one is that you have retinol um, and some of the depuffing agents and caffeine for the under eye, which makes sense, it's very deliberate, it makes sense. But the upper eyelid one, interestingly, actually contains like the glue polymer that you would get from the Peter Thomas Roth one. So interestingly, so for people who get like hooded bags, mm -hmm. it creates that immediate tightening effect on the upper eyelid. And then it has the retinol and the rest for the lower eyelid. It's sort of a very interesting product in that way and makes a lot of sense to me. So if you have followed us for a while, you'll know that still one of my go-to eye creams of choice, what was I was wearing before I just applied uh, a different eye cream to my under eye right now, uh, I was actually still the Biosance Marine Algae eye cream. Now this is incredible, these marine algaes. I don't know what it is about this because there's no ingredient in this that really should be having the effect that it's having for me. I think it's like, I, it was ITK? Mm -hmm. It's burning. Me too, it is, which yes. I just applied it to my upper eyelids because you told me it was good for me. My hooded eyes, <laughs> like it'll lift. So I put it on my upper eyelids, but it's burning too. Yeah, I don't like that at all. The Marine Algae Eye Cream, incredible eye cream, stood the test of time for me. Thick, moisturizing, and does for some reason help with my under eyes. I don't know why. I love it. It works. Here we are. We're both about to embark in like a three month eyelid dermatitis journey. I can tell. Peptides. Super gentle. Great in your eye product. The, the, now keep in mind peptides. I've heard some knocks on peptides. Like I did a video on the uh, lip balm from the Inky List and one of the major knocks on it was like it's misbranded because the peptides are marketed to do the immediate lifting, but they're not. And like, well, duh, like when are peptides ever been your immediate beneficial effect? No, this is your long game. So peptides here live in the same space. They help grow collagen long-term. They have numerous benefits, but they're not providing the instant benefit like the hyaluronic acid and the L'Oreal product is. So this is another ingredient you'll find used often for those long-term benefits for the fine lines, wrinkles, if that's contributing to the redundancy in that skin. So peptides specifically, 
Now, there's two different ways you can approach peptides underneath the eye. You could look for something like matrixyl that boosts collagen. You could look for something like argireline and this snail toxin or this snail-like peptide toxin uh, that can actually paralyze the muscles. And by paralyzing the muscles around the eyes, this has a Botox-like effect, not Botox, but Botox-like effect where it prevents the wrinkle formation and it works very, very quickly in fact. So you won't get that crepiness, those lines that develop around the eyes. Um, and then you can also use peptides like matrixyl that will boost collagen around the eyes. And we've done a video on matrixyl in the past. And so two approaches to under the eyes and two really helpful ways that you could use peptides underneath the eyes. Now, what types of products have argireline under the eyes? I know that the Skin Better Science Interfuse Eye Cream has caffeine, niacinamide, this snail toxin that works like Botox, not Botox, but works like Botox. Um, and it also has matrixyl synth, which is another collagen building peptide. So this is a product that's pretty comprehensive. Again, eye cream that's over $100. Is it worth it? That's up to you to decide. It does have a powerful combination of ingredients that could help with under eye backs. He just like said the $100 mark for an eye cream. And that's not unusual. That's not unusual. And honestly, like, I've seen a lot of vitamin K eye creams. I think that ingredient is particularly expensive to work with. Same with like epidermal growth factor. And these ingredients, like vitamin K included, th these are supporting ingredients. So like if, if that money is there for you to spend and you don't feel it when it leaves your wallet, you know, anecdotally, then it's probably okay to add that into your team. Functionally database, it can be helpful, but it's not like the dramatic results of this polymer. Like if you're spending that money wanting to see something dramatic, you're not gonna get it. So if it hurts, if that is an investment for you, then I would say skip those types of ingredients and you can skip the expensive eye cream altogether if it's gonna fall in that category. But to summarize this idea of eye creams, eye creams can be beneficial, for under eye issues, as long as you're deliberate about what ingredients you're looking for. Now, if it's just a tiny little moisturizer in a small tube, you don't need a specific eye cream. And there's, there's many different reasons we can go through and the eye cream research is still far behind. We still need a lot to go through, but the only thing that's gonna give you that dramatic immediate effect in a cream is something that's actually forming a glue on the skin. Otherwise, you're not gonna see immediate results like that. All right, so moving on to the procedure element. Now, there are many different ways. We'll go again, least invasive to most invasive. I would say probably least invasive would be to do neuromodulators around the eye, like Botox and Dysport. Now, Botox and Dysport, injecting them around the orbicularis oculate muscle can help with the, um, what are they called? Crow's feet? Crow's feet. <laughs> it can help with crow's feet. Um, also, if you get the jelly roll underneath the eyes, some people come in and they ask for this, you can inject a little bit of Botox right underneath the eye here. And that's gonna help a little bit with the wrinkles around the eye that she was having, but it's not gonna solve the puffiness issue that she was having there. Now, the next thing that you can do from procedures that would be a little bit more invasive would actually be to do some laser underneath the eyes. So some of the resurfacing lasers like CO2, like erbium, by creating a little microtrauma to the skin, even microneedling can have this effect. You will actually cause collagen to build. You will cause the skin to tighten through wound healing mechanisms. And so it can also tighten, permanently tighten the areas underneath the eyes. And this is actually will help a little bit with that puffiness and under eye bag formation. Right, and then beyond those, then you get into the world of surgery. Um, there are multiple different ways to approach this. I worked with an oculoplastic surgeon during my fellowship and just watching them take care of this area very thoughtfully, meticulously, uh, and very personally. So like the, the reason I'm emphasizing this is um, I found the one-on-one -on -one interactions and evaluations from the surgeon and the patients very, very, very detailed and deliberate because he was very particular about who would respond best to what treatment. So if you would pursue a surgery, I had to recommend you just find a good, like it's easy, but like I tried to find a good oculoplastic surgeon, let them evaluate you and they will be able to walk you through if procedurally, surgically, that is the best way to fix this for you. Again, if the under eye issue is due to fat protrusion, your your fat is actually protruding, there's really no cream, there's really no laser that's gonna help with that, only surgery is gonna help with that. So again, we have to be very deliberate. You know, I think a lot of products, a lot of procedures, they overpromise, they underdeliver. And the reason why is we're not using the right things to target the right issues or the underlying cause. And I think that's why people get frustrated. I think that's why 
a lot of times there's a lot of misinformation out there is trying to get to the root cause and actually treating it. We try to do that our best on the channel. Again, we try to like get to the, the meat of it. We always start with the why and then we tell you how to treat it. Um, but again, if you know why, then you'll have better results in the end. So now that you have all of that information, you can make an educated decision uh, when you look in the mirror and say, is this something that I, it bothers me? Is this something that I want to work on? And that's fine if you do, it's fine if you don't. But now you're armed with knowledge and that is the most important thing that we can provide for you. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you in the next video. See you next time.